it's actually midnight right now. Um, we just we had some friends over, just left, so um, I'm not sleepy, so I decided to record a couple of videos maybe. Uh, one thing I've wanted to talk about for a long time is a simple concept that I think is pretty clear uh, to anyone who thinks about these things, but uh, um, decided to share with you anyway. Uh, it's uh, about the state and competition. This, by the way, is a sample, an example of great tobacco mixtures, pipe tobacco mixtures, done by a small shop in Pennsylvania called J.M. Boswell, B-O-S-W-E-L-L. -L. A wonderful shop, a wonderful shop. I think uh, it's been in business for like 30 years, it's family owned. And they make, if you're into aromatic tobaccos, they make some of the best stuff you can possibly imagine. It's cheap, it's delicious, highly recommend. Full disclosure, I have no financial interest in J.M. Boswell, I'm their customer. Mm. Very nice. Anyway, state and competition. What I mean by this is state is characterized by the fact that they outlaw uh, competition with themselves, right? State outlaws competition with itself in the areas where it's a monopolist, uh, meaning the provision of dispute resolution as in courts and judicial system, police and the like, right? We all know what happens with monopolies. Monopolies, when there's a restricted entry into the market, like nobody can <laughs> set up a competing police force to compete with the state. That means that the incentives are in place for the state to decrease the quality and quantity of services produced and to raise the price, meaning the state tends to get more and more expensive and the quality of service we get from the state will tend to be lower and lower, the quality and the quantity of that service. So, you know, the examples or ha how it manifests will be police brutality, uh, uh, police state, right? We're paying for the police and yet they're not protected, protecting us. They're not legally obligated to protect us. They're not, they're not legally obligated to go into your house uh, uh, when there's a burglary or an invasion going on and rescue you or whatever. Uh, and yet we cannot get out of paying for police. Um, naturally, as any monopoly, if you find yourself in a situation where people have to pay you, there's no way we can not pay. I talked about it in my previous video. You can't really not pay the state. You cannot openly resist paying your taxes. They will tend to decrease the quality and quantity of services produced and they will tend to raise the price. Uh, there, this sort of segues into another video that I'm going to make about the unsustainability of minimal state or limited government for economic reasons. Uh, but this particular point is pretty clear, I think. As with any monopoly, again, if there's a restriction on entry, you will get less and less for for ever higher price. The only way to combat this is competition. Obviously, the way to combat monopolies is competition. If you have uh, open entry into the market, no monopoly can last for very long. Or should no monopoly can extract very high prices from the customers if there's a threat of competition. if there's existing competition or potential competition. So, how do you fight the state? Well, you can fight the state with other states. Meaning, if you have competing centers of power, uh, competing for those extracted, extracted revenues, tax money, and if switching from jurisdiction to jurisdiction is feasible, as in relatively low cost, to the taxpayer, that is the only thing that's going to stop the state from continually raising the price for its services and reducing its quality and quantity. Shit, this is not going to work. I'm going to let this go out and just do the video.
Um, apologize for that. Um, what it means is if you have a bunch of small states, sometimes as small as a city, all next to each other, like a patchwork, kind of what you had in Europe in like 18th, you know, continental Europe in 18th, 19th century, uh, at least the early part of the 19th century, where you can, you know, basically just cross the street and find yourself in another jurisdiction. Um, and mind you, with that kind of situation, it's kind of difficult to restrict freedom of movement because you will paralyze all commerce. And uh, the rulers are not dumb. Well, they may be dumb, but they're not, uh, at least they're not uh, so dumb not to understand the fact that if you paralyze commerce, there will be no taxes to extract, pretty much, right? There, there will be no wealth to extract. So uh, uh, where you have relative freedom of movement and relatively low-cost moves, uh, where these jurisdiction are, jurisdictions are numerous and all next to each other, you have a situation where there's finally an incentive for the state to reduce the price and raise the quality of service, which translates into basically more freedom from, for the population. Consider, consider this. Uh, if you're a federal government, you can enact a law or a regulation, and you got this whole 310 million people population captured, uh, they're all subject to that uh, legislation. They're all subject to those regulations. There's no escape. And they can enforce those regulations on the entire territory of this huge country, United States. Consider you know, having 50 small states, all with their jurisdictions that are equal to one another, where moving from one jurisdiction to another is relatively low cost. People move in the United States, people move all the time for jobs, for other reasons, family, whatever. People move habitually, not habitually, but, but routinely. Um, imagine if all those states that we move between now were actually separate countries. Uh, that is the only incentive, really, to combat monopoly. Again, mon monopoly can be combated by competition, with competition. So if, if you want to combat a monopoly of state, one way to do it is to set up competing states, right? To have, to have a situation where you have states competing for the tech space. That's why I am a separatist, meaning I'm always, and in all circumstances, and at all times, in favor of separatism, secession, breaking up larger states into smaller states simply because in very practical terms, for very practical and, and, and easily understandable reasons, this increases the amount of freedom. Because it creates what the state always tries to avoid, namely competition. Again, by definition, a state is an entity that tries to escape competition by using violence. Um, there is a scenario, and it existed in history, where uh, the fact that there were many competing jurisdictions severely restricted their incentive and, a, and practical ability to exploit their populations, which results in increased freedom. Again, it's not ideal, but it's I, I will take a situation of 50 independent states as an independent jurisdiction, independent countries with no federal overarching authority any day over the existence of the United States. So I'm a separatist, and you should be too.